A deal that would give Purdue Pharma and members of the Sackler family who own it immunity from future opioid lawsuits is moving forward. A federal judge moved that controversial deal forward last week. The immunity would, quote, extend to dozens of family members, more than 160 financial trusts, and at least 170 companies, consultants, and other entities associated with the Sacklers. Roger Fisk, Democratic strategist, Obama admin alum, and former senior aide of communication and policy for Senator John Kerry, and Philip Wegman, White House reporter for Real Clear Politics, join us to discuss. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. So how are the Sacklers still free, Roger? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a moral scandal. Um, it, it's similar to our last uh, subject in a way in terms of scale. And if, if I were, I'm here in West Virginia, which I'm sure you and your, and Philip and your viewers know it was, was devastated by the opioid um, uh, kind of tidal wave that swept across this country specifically in rural America. There's one uh, town in West Virginia that has about 5,000 residents and it consumed 1.7 million opioid uh, or Oxycontin tablets in a calendar year. Now, there's first off, there's the moral component, right? Which is we've lost this capacity to just call wrong, wrong when it's on this scale. If I were to go into someone's home or business and ruin their life and, and destroy their savings and, and any number of other things, I would go to jail, whereas this company can go into millions of people's lives and destroy their livelihoods, pumping this stuff proactively into communities in numbers that far um, outweigh the, the number of people there. And there's virtually no moral conversation about this at all. Uh, and then the, the, the last thing is, is that um, the, similar to the immigration debate, what we do is we, we, we don't have a moral conversation about the people that hire immigra illegal immigrants. We don't have a moral conversation about the fact that so much of the US economy actually depends on people coming here. We use language like people coming here and taking jobs when it's American bosses that give jobs to illegal um, immigrants. And that same absence of moral conversation happens here. The fact that these people can walk around in polite society and literally have this blood on their hands says something about all of us, and it's a moral disgrace. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. But Philip, let's play devil's advocate for a moment. Is there any benefit to granting immunity in this case? You know, sometimes you can look and say, all right, cost benefit analysis, we'll get something from this immunity that's worth granting it. In this case, is there an argument for that at all? It doesn't seem like there is. Um, the Sackler family would pay something like $4 billion. A lot of their other assets would be shielded from that. Uh, they would set up some sort of um, foundation where a lot of the, the, the documents would become public, sort of giving a better understanding of, of, of how this happened. Um, but that, that doesn't seem to be just. And uh, you can tell from the fact that 24 state attorney generals having signed on uh, opposing um, you know, the, the current uh, you know, decision to let them be shielded from bankruptcy. I, I think it kind of shows that there, there is a, a bipartisan outrage on this um, front. But I think you know, to, to Roger's point about a moral conversation, uh, it is a, a, a tragedy of the last year and a half that while we've been having the coronavirus pandemic, the opioid epidemic has been chased from the headlines uh, to an extent and it has only gotten worse because you had people who were alienated and alone before, um, and then they were alienated and alone even more. And we saw uh, addiction, whether it was uh, booze or pills, get worse, not better. Um, I remember talking to you know, some uh, undersecretaries at HHS uh, last year. Their concern was that all of the uh, advances that they had made, that they thought they had made, in fighting back against the opioid epidemic uh, had sort of been reversed. And this would just be, um, you know, this, this would be, it would seem to, to be a very sad uh, exclamation point uh, to, to that fact if, if they were able to, uh, you know, shield themselves through this, this bankruptcy structure. Right, and to me it's one thing if uh, some of the members of the family remain out of prison if they weren't involved with this, uh, with this situation, okay, fine. Uh, but the idea that anybody in the family is going to benefit from a single penny of money that was made off the backs of so much pain and suffering uh, across the country is, is atrocious. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems like, and Roger, I want to get your take on this, 
figure out how much the Sacklers uh, made off of this, uh, how much interest they've made off of that since then, and take every single penny. Like, how, how is it possible that they could walk away with even a dime of this money? Yeah, the, the, I mean, clearly, the, the number of financial entities that they've built almost, you know, speaks to the fact that they were preparing for this day, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think they, they knew the knock on the door was going to come. But to talk about the knock on the door for a quick second, I'm going to guess, and I feel pretty comfortable saying this, that as we unravel all this and peel away the layers, someone was asleep at the switch when it came to law enforcement. And that probably says a lot about Big Pharma's influence on our politics and everything else. Similar to Wall Street scandals and things like that. There are laws in place that are supposed to protect people from this stuff. There are laws in place that, that should be monitoring how much a pharmaceutical company is pumping into a town of 5,000 people. And if it's 1.7 million OxyContin pills, someone somewhere should be doing their job and stopping that. But I would imagine as we get more into this, it's going to be a, a pay to play kind of situation. And once again, we're going to see the corrosive uh, effect that big money has on our politics, not only our politics, but our law enforcement. Phil, before we run, I want to play a clip and get you to respond for it. Can we play that clip that we have queued up here? I rise to speak on a common sense bill I introduced to promote accountability for America's opioid crisis. The opioid epidemic has taken almost as many lives as the COVID-19 crisis. The Sackler family has amassed billions of dollars, in large part through the sales of Purdue Pharma's OxyContin. Members of the family have directly been involved in the company's efforts to flood our communities with this dangerous painkiller and to mislead the public on the danger it poses for their health. Purdue has declared bankruptcy, and members of the Sackler family are seeking legal releases from individual lawsuits brought against them by government entities. My bill, H.R. 2096, the Sackler Act, ensures that individuals accused of wrongdoing by government actors like the Sacklers are prevented from evading responsibility through bankruptcy proceedings. Now, Philip, a lot of people in Congress are tied up financially with the Sacklers going back years. Do you think a piece of legislation like that stands a chance of passing the House and Senate and getting signed on President Biden's desk? It would certainly seem to have a chance. Um, when, again, if you look at the, the state attorney generals who are getting involved in this, I think that when you when you look at the gravity of, of those numbers, when, when you see that, uh, you know, the, the death toll for COVID and the death toll for the opioid epidemic uh, um, you know, are in the same ballpark. Uh, that, that's pretty staggering. And uh, I think that uh, this is certainly something that one would, would hope you would get uh, both Republicans and Democrats to take a closer look at and come to you know, an, an appropriate agreement. Um, you know, we, we've seen, you know, bipartisan ha bipartisanship happen, um, you know, already. It's been rare, uh, you know, in the last uh, couple of months, but it can happen again. And, um, you know, I certainly hope that uh, Republicans and Democrats take some time off of uh, bickering to maybe govern in the, uh, the people's interest. Yeah, and what's most amazing to me is that the Sacklers really broke the Washington scandal cycle with this, which is the typical cycle is there's, there's bad behavior, there are, then, there, then there are investigations that win Pulitzer Prizes about it, then there are books, then there are documentaries, then uh, the bad behavior is suppressed for a while, and then eventually it may reappear and the whole cycle repeats. They just plowed right through that whole cycle of Pulitzers and documentaries and books and just kept on going, and the DEA was complicit in, in the whole thing. They're waging a drug war everywhere except on this one issue where it actually matters. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Rising, New York State Senator Jabari Brisport joins us to discuss his push for single-payer health care in New York getting close to happening when Rising continues.